Hi, I'm Doug Bailey, and I'm going to talk to you about GAN quality and reliability. So let's take a look at the, the bathtub curve. Uh, on the x-axis here, I have log of time. On the y-axis, failure rate. And then the green line here is the rate of failure of a typical product over time. In the uh, early phase of a product's life, you get um, quality-related mismanufactured products. So this is our initial quality part of the bathtub curve. In the far distant time, you have parts that are worn out. Worn out. They've some kind of failure mode has been exercised uh, over time, and, and these parts have worn out. And in the center section, we have devices that were well manufactured. They haven't worn out yet, but they're dead anyway. Well, what happened here? Typically, these parts have been overstressed. So let's talk about the far distant future, the wear out mechanisms that might affect uh, a GAN device in, uh, well, let's say more than 11 years, which is for context where 100,000 hours is, or a century, which is, uh, would be a million hours. And the, we can't wait around for um, a century for our GAN to fail. We want our GAN now. So uh, the best thing to do here is we have to find a way to accelerate time. And the way we accelerate time in the semiconductor industry is we heat things up, we apply voltage to them, and we use humidity. So to accelerate time at the IC level, we run a test called high temperature op life. And this test is designed to run a relatively small number of parts, but five lots times 48 parts for 1,000 hours. And that gives us a very good view of whether there is a process dependency and whether any one of these devices has been exercised into failure during, during a test. And then there's another test we do called HALT, which applies a different, in fact, increased humidity at a slightly lower temperature using the same number of parts for the same amount of time. But GAN is a new technology, and so we want to be doubly sure that the device inside the IC is robust and long-lived. So we do tests specifically designed for the GAN. One of those is HTRB, high temperature reverse bias test, and high temperature gate bias test. And those tests are also 1,000 hours at elevated temperature under voltage stress, under a DC voltage stress, to make sure there are no uh, migration issues uh, or long-term uh, degradation mechanisms associated with high voltage at uh, high temperature. We also do something called hot carrier test, and that's intended to find any traps where electrons in the um, uh, in the channel can get uh, diverted into oxides and become, become trapped. We do an electromigration test to make sure that our conductors, all the metal that's on top of the die, are, are appropriately sized uh, and won't be pushed around by, by current flows. And we do a gate oxide integrity test to, imp uh, to prove the strength of our gate. So these are the tests we run for industrial and uh, commercial customers. Uh, but what about automotive? Automotive folks like GAN too. So uh, we run more tests. And what we run uh, primarily for automotive is H3TRB. And this is a test uh, that increases, further increases, the humidity and temperature over uh, the standard HTRB. And then we run a series of uh, tests that are designed to switch the part on and off multiple times to prove um, that it's um, immune to thermal shock from being switched on. And that's power temperature cycling and intermittent op life testing. There's actually a military uh, spec test. Uh, and those are uh, the automotive tests we run, but we run them on a larger sample size. So all of these tests are run on a sample size of 77 devices.
So now we've taken care of the long term, the wear out mechanisms. Let's take a look at the short term, the manufacturing quality problems, the parts that failed in early life. And that's this area of the curve. So at PI, um, you know, how do we gauge how many of these parts are we allowed to, to let through into our, into our product stream? And the answer to that is zero. We're not allowed any of these parts. And so our, our curve actually looks like this, which would be a very uncomfortable bath. Um, but how do we do that? How do we make uh, a, a essentially perfect uh, product stream? Well, the answer is prior to final test, final test, we run a lot of additional uh, in-process monitors. And what we're trying to do with those in-process monitors is we're bringing down the, we're improving the quality, we're reducing the number of poor parts that make it into final test. And that's critical for improving product quality. So how do we find these parts and eliminate them before they even get to final test? Well, the way we do that is firstly, our in-process monitor of our EPI. EPI is absolutely critical when you build GAN. Uh, it's the most important part of generating a GAN transistor. And because we build our own EPI, we, we don't buy it from a fab. No, we don't buy finished wafers either. We, we build everything. Uh, it means we have complete control over the process and we can check it at various points. And that means that only the best wafers make it through to patenting. After a wafer has been patented uh, into a transistor, we then run some stress tests. And the stress tests are there to, def to find and either kill or ink out the parts that are uh, uh, unacceptable or have a risk of a, uh, a quality problem before the parts even make it to final test. So how do we validate that our in-process monitors and our yield improvements and our final test regime are, are going to yield a perfect uh, product stream out of the other side. And the way we do that is with a test called ELFR, early life failure rate. And that's highly analogous to high temperature op life. But instead of doing a small number of parts for a long time, we do a large number of parts for a relatively short time. And in this case, it's 800 parts for 48 hours, multiple lots to obviously to ensure that we don't have any process lot dependencies. So we've spoken about reliability and wear out mechanisms and how we guarantee initial quality. But we've got a middle section here. Um, these are parts that are perfectly good. They've been manufactured perfectly. They haven't worn out yet, but maybe they're dead anyway. Uh, what happened? Well, the answer is overstress. So how do we assure that our devices are robust under temperature, voltage, and humidity that they're going to find out there in the wild? Well, we run more tests. These tests are MSL, moisture sensitivity level, UHAST, which is also a moisture test under pressure, TMCL, which is a temperature cycling test, which tests for differential heating and cooling, and high temperature storage life, which is the absolute high temperature test. So one of the most important parts of a power semiconductor is its ability to withstand voltage. So let's talk about robustness uh, under high voltage conditions. We specify GAN, two types of GAN, 750 volt BV GAN and 900 volt BV GAN. But our BVs are not specified in the same way as a silicon device where you'd be talking about uh, a breakdown voltage. So even though we talk about BV, that's not how it's set. There's a property of GAN called dynamic RDS on. Dynamic RDS on. And it turns out that when you apply high voltage to GAN, it actually increases the RDS on of the device. It recovers later, but under 
the initial voltage, and for a short while afterwards, uh, it is a, a higher RDS on. And it turns out, somewhat arbitrarily, that we've chosen 5% as being the limit that we can accept an increase in RDS on. And that is how we choose the BV of our GAN devices. So if our BV is being set by dynamic RDS on, where does it break down? There's got to be a number. And it turns out that for both of these GAN families, the actual physical breakdown is somewhere around 1400 volts. So there's a masses of margin with respect to the data sheet BV limit. So with this battery of tests for wear out mechanisms to ensure reliability, for initial quality, process monitors, voltage margin, and tests related to temperature and moisture sensitivity, whether you're making an adapter or an automobile, you can have confidence in PowiGAN. For more information and to find out how we can help you with your GAN design, go to power.com.